So we have question number 12 and 5.3. Please draw a picture of the unit circle to solve this like I did earlier and before and in the future, I will almost always draw a picture. So here we have the cosine of some angle is 5 sixteenths and A uh, is an angle in the first quadrant. Then they say, hey, find the cosine of 180 minus A. Ooh, 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 interesting. How do we do that? Let's try it. All right, so 5 sixteenths, 180 minus A. New picture time. So what do we know? We know the cosine of some angle A is equal to 5 sixteenths. And we know it's in the first quadrant. So let's draw that given information. So in quadrant one. And we're asked to extend that into another quadrant with uh, some information. So I'm gonna draw the whole circle. So let's see, cosine is an X value, 5 sixteenths, 4 sixteenths would be a quarter. So that's about a half, that's about a quarter. 5 sixteenths should be around here, I think, right there. So then if I go up, Dot, 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 dot. Elizabeth, where are you? Somewhere up here. Hello, question? Oh. Oops, accidentally unmuted, Emily, nope. or did you have a question? Yep, <laughs> sorry. All right. All right, so, so here's what I know so far. All right, so A is this angle, oops this angle right here let's draw that in red to get from here to here so the next thing i was asked for this problem the actual question says what's the cosine of 180 minus a all right so let me think of that for a second well 180 degrees would take me over to here right there and then to go this is positive a this way Right. We go counterclockwise when we measure an angle, and they're saying go 180 degrees, but then go back whatever A is. So here's me in green going 180, and then I want to go back whatever A is. So I'm going to go minus A. Okay. So that's going to put me up there like that. So that's going to give me this symmetric point here right across there. So what do I know about these two points? The point where the angle theta is equal to 180 minus A, and where theta is equal to just A. In my picture, those two have the same Y value, right? Using the symmetry of the circle, they have the same Y value. What do I know about their X values? Well, based on the symmetry of the circle, their X's are opposite. So they have the same Y, but they have opposite x values. So then this x value has to be negative 5 sixteenths. And the x value is the cosine. So now I know based on my picture, the cosine of 180 minus a has to be negative 5 sixteenths. So what we're again, the importance here is using the symmetry of a circle. I looked at some problems like that earlier. So let's consider some more of these uh, 180s. Now, what's, what's 180 in radians? That would be pi. So this is in degree mode. If we did the same problem in radian mode, the cosine, let's suppose we say the cosine of some radian angle theta was 5 sixteenths then what we would know is that the cosine of pi minus that angle would have to be negative 5 sixteenths because of this symmetry in the circle. So I'm going to just talk a little bit more about symmetry and then you have enough information that goes over all of section three and the homework. New page. And we've got a sim little symmetry with pi and two pi. And this is the, the, for the last few questions of your homework. So consider 
any circle, even though we usually do the unit circle. So if I'm given some angle, let's say, let's put it over here this time, and we'll call that angle theta. It has a symmetric point over here. And the symmetry related to that angle is that the reference angle here is also theta. And then the, if you think about the reference angle would be moving in a negative angular direction, right? Positive is counterclockwise, negative is, is clockwise. Then another way I can think about that angle right there, this is pi radians to get to there. So I swung all the way over to pi and then I went back by theta. So this angle could also be considered pi minus theta. Suppose we call this point right here, x, y. This point over here due to the reflection has to have the same y value, but the x value is gonna be negative because I'm in quadrant two. So this would have to be the point, whatever x is, but negative comma y. So some things I can get out of this picture right here, y is the sign. So right here, this tells me that uh, whatever the sine of theta is, whatever number that's equal to, that has to be the same number, right? Because we're at the same height here as the sine of pi minus theta. As far as the cosine goes, if I consider the x value, right? remember the sine is y, cosine is the x value, what do I know about the x values for theta versus pi minus theta? Well, if this x value is positive, then I'd swing over to pi minus theta. That's gonna give me the negative version of that x value right there. So that means these have to be opposites. So the cosine of theta would be the opposite of the cosine of pi minus theta. And whenever we can make a general statement like this for any angle, this is called an identity. And then we can go around the circle doing similar things. So let's do one more of these and then we'll quit. If I reflect this point down over to here, then the angle, the reference angle I end up with from here to here, that would be theta. The full angle to get from here to here could be described as going pi and then theta more. Right? So this blue angle here would be pi plus whatever theta is. And I get this new point here. So if I know this point and I know the value of x and the value of y, that's quadrant one. Quadrant three, due to symmetry, it's just gonna be the opposite of whatever x is and the opposite of whatever y is for that point right there. And if I look at how the sine and cosine are related, let's focus on the y value for a second. So if I knew what the sine of theta was, that would be my original y value right there. And somebody says, well, what about the sine of pi plus theta? Well, in my circle, I can see if I go pi and then I go theta more, that's gonna give me just the same, almost the same y, but negative. So these two things are gonna be opposite each other. Sine of theta is gonna to have to be the opposite of sine of pi plus theta. All right, so drawing pictures using the symmetry of the circle are gonna be huge tools for us in trigonometry. So this section is about two things, three things really. Uh, what does the sine and the cosine mean on the unit circle? Those are important that on the unit circle, we know that x squared plus y squared is equal to one. X is the cosine. So that tells me that the cosine of the angle squared plus the sine of the angle squared has to be one. Usually people ditch the second set of parentheses and write it as cosine squared of the angle, which is a little bit strange, but it's common sine squared of the angle equals one. And then the other important thing is important thing is symmetry on the circle.
All right, that's it for now. If you have questions, please let me know.